Hello, and welcome to this video. Today I'll describe Lamport's hash-based signature scheme. It's a one-time signature scheme and holds the distinction of being the very first digital signature scheme ever created. Leslie Lamport described his signature scheme to Whit Diffie in 1975. The scheme was later included in Diffie and Hellman's landmark 1976 paper, which laid the foundations for public key encryption and digital signatures. Lamport further detailed his method in a 1979 technical report. As we'll see, Lamport's signature scheme has a desirable feature that its security relies only on standard cryptographic hash function properties rather than number theoretic assumptions such as the intractability of factoring large integers or computing discrete logarithms on elliptic curves. As a result, Lamport's scheme remains secure against both classical and quantum attacks. To illustrate the core concept behind Lamport's signature scheme, let's start with a toy version that signs a single bit message. G is a pre-image resistant hash function, also called a one-way function. G maps an n-bit input to an n-bit output. In practice, G could be the SHA-256 hash function, so n equals 256, with inputs restricted to 256-bit strings. In key generation, Alice randomly selects two n-bit strings x0 and x1, and computes their hash values y0 and y1. Alice's private key is the pair x0, x1, and her public key is the pair y0, y1. Observe that computing the private key from the public key is infeasible since G is assumed to be pre-image resistant. Alice's signature on a single bit message M is the private key component XM. In other words, to sign a zero bit, Alice reveals X0, whereas to sign a one bit, Alice reveals X1. Anyone can verify Alice's signature by checking that the signature S, which is either X0 or X1, hashes to the component YM of Alice's public key. The single bit signing scheme can be generalized to allow signing messages of arbitrary bit lengths. This is the Lamport signature scheme. As before, G is a pre-image resistant hash function that maps n-bit inputs to n-bit outputs. H is a collision-resistant hash function that maps inputs of any bit lengths to n-bit outputs. In key generation, Alice randomly selects n pairs of n-bit strings. The jth pair is denoted x0j, x1j. She computes their hashes yij using the hash function g. Alice's private key is a list of the xij strings, shown here as red dots. Her public key is the list of their hash values yij, shown here as green dots. Alice can use her private key to sign a message m of any length. Essentially, her signature on m is the collection of signatures for the single bit signature scheme we saw earlier on the individual bits of the hash of M. Alice first hashes M using the collision resistant hash function H. The bits of the resulting hash value little h are denoted H0, H1, up to Hn minus 1. To create the signature, Alice selectively reveals components of her private key based on the hash bits. For each index j, she includes x0j in the signature if hj is 0, or x1j if hj is 1. More concisely, the jth signature component sj is x hj, j. For example, suppose that the hash of m is 0, 1, dot, 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 1. Since the first bit is 0, the signature component s0 is x0, 0. zero. Since the second bit is 1, the signature component S1 is X11. And since the last bit is 1, the signature component SN-1 is X1N-1. 
anyone who has an authentic copy of Alice's public key Y can verify the signed message by first computing the hash H of M and then checking that the signature components are correct. In other words, SJ hashes with the hash function G to the public key component Y indexed by the jth hash bit HJ and by J. As you may have observed, a signed message exposes half of the components of Alice's private key, namely the blue dots. A second signed message is expected to expose another quarter of her private key components. Security rapidly degrades as Alice signs more messages. Thus, to preserve security, Alice should only sign one message using the same private key. This is why Lamport's scheme is classified as a one-time signature scheme, abbreviated OTS. The security notion for a one-time signature scheme is a restricted version of the general signature security definition presented in the first video. The restriction is that the adversary is only permitted one query to its signing oracle. Thus, a one-time signature scheme is set to be secure if it is existentially unforgeable by a computationally bounded adversary who is permitted to obtain the signature for only one message of their choosing. The security argument for Lamport's one-time signature scheme is straightforward. Suppose an adversary obtains Alice's signature on the message M1 of their choosing. If the adversary later forges a signature on the second message M2, the collision resistance of H ensures that M2's hash differs from M1's hash in at least one bit position. Without loss of generality, suppose that the first bit of M1's hash is zero and the first bit of M2's hash is one. Then the first component of Alice's signature on M1 is X00. However, the first component of Alice's signature on M2 is x1, 0. In order to compute the signature, the adversary must be able to find a pre-image of y10. But this isn't feasible since g is pre-image resistant. Thus, the adversary is unable to produce a valid forgery. Lamport private keys and public keys are each 2n squared bits in size. For n equals 256, this is 16,384 bytes. The signature size is n squared bits, which for n equals 256 is 8,192 bytes. Key generation requires two n evaluations of the hash function g. Signature generation requires only one evaluation of h to hash the message. Signature verification requires one h evaluation and n evaluations of g. In the next video, we'll explore some limitations of Lampert's signature scheme and describe some solutions. Among these solutions are the Winternet's one-time signature scheme and Merkle trees. Mm -hmm.